Check. Testing one, two. Testing one, one, two. Calling all ducks. Calling all ducks. No, it doesn't look like it's working. Check, test. Okay. And a merry morning and a merry afternoon, depending on where you are and what part of the world. Um, welcome. I'm Ted Jednak, or as some friends uh, call me, Judy. Uh, while, just while we're waiting for people to uh, join us in today's uh, Triple T TV show, well, let me explain why. Uh, this is going back pre-internet, and uh, my wife and I, we'd organised a, a secret uh, weekend getaway uh, and uh, made a booking in a lovely um, boutique country hotel. Uh, and George, you're going to love this story because it almost has a Greek flavour to it. Um, welcome. Uh, so anyway, I, I booked into this hotel. Uh, we we're going to have a, a, a romantic weekend. And when I turn up, uh, your name, Jednak, and uh, I said, sorry, sir, we don't have a booking. I said, look, I booked, I confirmed. We, we used to do things in those days by telephone, you see. Uh, and um, she uh, reception and looked around and said, hey, give me your book. And so she kind of turned her around to me and there it was. Not Ted Jednak, but Judy Wack. Yeah. Judy Wack was the, the name that I was registered under. It wasn't, I was, wasn't doing a Mr. or Mrs. Smith or anything like that. It was quite legit. Uh, so hence, some um, um, good friends uh, refer to me as Judy. Uh, and that's uh, the background story. Anyway, great to be back on uh, Facebook Live and reaching out to our global community of foot fixers who are passionate about helping more people like never before. Today is all about shortcutting your path so that you can get the gangbuster results that your paying clients demand of you. Um, I've been a health practitioner geez, over 30 years now, and as a business owner and operator, I've established multiple centers and mentored hundreds of uh, practitioners in business. I've also had the great privilege of training foot fixers globally for over 22 years. So if you're a podiatrist, physio, chiro, osteopath, uh, physical therapist, remedial therapist, and you're interested in fixing feet, well, welcome. You're in the right place. Thanks for joining me live from my office here in South Australia and middle of winter, sunny South Australia, I'm pleased to say. You know, I was born in the year 1962 and it was that very year the first transatlantic satellite television transmission took place. And it happened on this very day, July the 11th, 1962. What an auspicious day. So. Here we are now chatting live on this thing called the Intertet. Get it? Intertet? Kane, thank you for that uh, idea on the weekend. I think the, the gin really paid off. <laughs> how times have changed, how technology has evolved. So today you're on Triple T TV. That's Ted's Tips on Tuesdays. Welcome wherever you are in the world. Uh, buongiorno, bonjour, hola, guten tag, um, konnichiwa, Birkenstock, uh, Kalimera, uh, Kawasaki, and Lederhosen. Oh, I wish I had a pair of Lederhosen. I like to do a Birkenstock dance, but uh, anyway, please say hi in the comments box below and let me know where you're from. Last week's show, we had a really strong uh, contingent from uh, Australia and from the UK. So some early birds uh, rising there. Uh, special mentions to Dawn from Eastbourne, England. Hi, Dawn. Um, also, we had Laura from Brighton in the UK and uh, called in to say hi. So... Hi, Laura, and special thanks to Julie. Uh, Julie suggested that we get a dog because uh, they have better manners. How right you are, Julie. Um, Penny has trouble keeping herself tidy, but our dog, Tio, he's an absolute angel. And uh, interestingly, Penny has just woken up uh, about five minutes ago, so I think she's getting herself all excited for today's show. Um, we had a fabulous response to our show uh, last week. It was all about shins. Geez, there are enough to give you the shins if uh, there was a part of the body that would. Um, today's show, it's all about how to join in the drum roll. How to fix those conditions that still give you the shins. Part two. All right, we got some great stuff to dive into today. 
Hey, you remember uh, last week how um, we dived into the uh, tib post muscle, uh, the navicular, its insertion site, and also went through my favourite navicular mobilisation uh, that we use for treating tib post tendonitis. Uh, I discussed the physiology and biomechanics of navicular displacements and its effects on the tib post muscle. Uh, also did a demonstration of the mobilization uh, technique uh, that uh, we use on the navicular. We had some assistance from Penny Lee, uh, our feline friend here, who's just keeping a little distance, that's good. Um, I also went through the key rookie mistakes and these things to avoid when mobilizing the navicular too. Uh, and uh, these were all mapped out for you. <laughs> I knew you should come in and put an appearance. Our freebie from last week. So hopefully uh, you got uh, your copy of the freebie for all about the naviculars. Um, if you haven't, it's uh, still available. You can still grab hold of your copy uh, indeed. So in today's show, you're going to get at least six tips. Yep, there's, there's six going on right there. Six tips that are simple, effective, and they're actionable that you can do immediately to improve your clinical outcomes for medial tibial stress syndrome, MTSS. Does it sound good? Ken Oath. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, for those international guests, Ken Oath uh, is just a, an Aussie ochreism. We have a, a great band, uh, the Ken Oath Orchestra, um, which is a little bit of uh, taking the piss out of uh, Aussies and their accent. Anyway, uh, we will continue forward. To achieve great clinical outcomes for tip post conditions, we're going to focus on the fascial lining. Not the feline lining, but the fascial lining. And this is because it's the physiological structure that's typically involved in the symptoms that your clients, your patients describe to you. Whether it's the attachment of uh, the tip post to the periosteum, whether it's trigger points uh, or tender points within the muscle itself, or whether it's at the myotendinous junction, or whether it's at the tendon attachment site, the fascia is a crucial element uh, that um, in my university training, I knew I can't remember getting taught anything about it. Uh, I believe a relatively new field, particularly for podiatrists and lower limb practitioners. Um, I'm even going to do a live demonstration of an incredibly effective diagnosis and treatment method that transformed how I treat medial tibial problems. So stay tuned because this could transform your clinical approach too. Uh, in fact, I'm going to walk you through the key elements of the physiology of fascia so that you can have an even better physiological understanding of why some medial tibial stress syndrome cases can be resistant to your treatments. This understanding is particularly useful if you've got a tib post case that hasn't fully resolved. You know, th those ones that kind of get better but not best. And um, if you've ever had a case like that, or if you've got a case like that that's causing you a bit of frustration, uh, just hit a thumbs up uh, across the screen so I get a bit of an idea that uh, we're on the right track and we're going to be uh, being able to serve you most effectively. Um, stay tuned, because I'm going to reveal all in this show. Hey, just on that, um, notice how you've never seen me below my waist? It's a little bit like a newsreader. Well, that all changes today. Scary thought. Okay, no, 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 don't tune out. It's, I'll keep myself tidy. All right, so who's in the house? Let me double check. George, great to see you. Your back and your front and your sides. Excellent. Good to have all of you here. Uh, we got uh, El Glasso. <laughs> nice. Helping me with my linguistics. Manuel, hola. Brad, Brad, is that uh, having your uh, fush and chops over the, uh, the ditch? Uh, okay, let's see where we go. You know, last week we had viewers on every continent on Earth, except Antarctica. I'm still working on that one. So um, if you know of anyone who uh, uh, is in that part of the world, please let me know. I'd love to have them on board. Um, wherever you are in the world, thank you very much for joining me live today from my office here in sunny South Australia. Uh, for those of you who have just joined us, uh, I'm Ted Jedinak, also known as Judy, uh, and we're here to reach out to the global community of foot fixers 
so that we can join forces and take your skills to the next level. Heck, I wish I had this type of multidisciplinary forum when I was a clinician. It would have saved me a heap of blood, sweat and tears. So let's shortcut your path and make serving your clients as stress-free and as efficient as possible. Now, as we go along, if you have any questions, um, please type them in. Um, there are no such thing as any dumb questions. Uh, the, you'll know that uh, there's always going to be some uh, pearls or some items that you don't understand what I'm covering. Uh, then it gives us an opportunity to help others understand that because it's highly likely that you're not alone. Okay. And now for one of the regular segments that we have in uh, our Triple T TV show, and that is today's top tip revelation. Are you ready? Ted, show us your tips. Today's tip is time to have a good old belly laugh. <laughs> I don't know, it's nothing to do with the topic, but here, a good belly laugh is a healthy thing to do. Uh, I was actually lazing uh, in front of the teeve last night and had Penny sitting on my stomach. Something happened, I started laughing. She was doing the whole jiggle thing, uh, and um, which made me laugh more than she wasn't happy because then she started biting me and I now have a case of cripple nipple. Um, maybe too much information. Okay, let's sink our teeth into today's topic. If you've just joined us, I'm Red Ted Jed, and we're chatting today about how to improve your clinical, your client's clinical outcomes when it comes to medial tibial stress syndrome. I'm even going to show you one of the most effective assessment techniques to help with MTSS. Why are we going to focus on the MTSS uh, diagnostic um, factors? Well, simple fact, physiological fact is that a strong, well-functioning tibialis posterior muscle is essential for walking, running, efficiency. In terms of size, in the, in the muscle bulk, the tip post makes up about 2% of the entire lower leg. So that's a, quite a small uh, piece of the musculature. And yet, the tip post accounts for somewhere between 13 and 15% of all running injuries, according to Sports Medicine Australia. Now, in my experience, limited attention is given to the anatomy and physiology of fascial linings and the role that it plays in normal muscle function, as well as in injured muscle tissues. My anatomy training, it certainly lacked uh, any depth uh, in the field of uh, fascial function. But if you have a good understanding of the fascial network, its uh, physiology and its response to stress or injury, you can catch up um, on your you know, Facebook feed or you can head elsewhere because if you got that all sorted out, terrific. Uh, today's show is probably no, not for you. But if you're interested in fascia and how it may be impacting your uh, medial tibial stress syndrome cases, stay on board. First, let's quickly review the anatomy of fascia. There are three key layers of myofascial material. The first layer is the superficial layer. Now, this is the layer that's just under the skin, uh, and it, it's uh, very much, as the name suggests, superficial layer, and it's a, a thin lining under, sits just below the skin. Deep fascia, this surrounds and separates all of the deep structures. So this includes all of the muscles, tendons, ligaments, bones, they all have their own unique deep fascial lining. The third layer of uh, fascia is the sub -serous. Now this is the um, stuff, it's again, it's a meshwork material, but it wraps around our internal organs. What we are interested in today and what we're going to focus on is the deep fascia along the medial tibial structures. So it's the bone, muscles, tendons, uh, all around there. Now remember, the deep fascia, it surrounds and separates every musculoskeletal structure in the whole body. In the foot, the ankle and the lower leg, which is the focus of our Triple T TV show, this lining and the separation enables each structure to slide and glide against each other until fascia gets stressed or damaged. Now, to explain what happens to fascia that is stressed, I need to quickly review the ingredients of fascia for you. 
So there's four primary ingredients. The uh, first one's collagen. So this is the principal protein of fascia. Uh, the second one is the elastin. So this provides the flexibility and elasticity of fascia. Uh, the third ingredient is reticulin. Now this is the supportive fibre that provides the meshwork structure. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, you, you know when you go to buy a bag of oranges and it's in that plasticky stocking material? That's what I think of uh, the, the, the meshwork of, of fascia. Uh, and you know, you can kind of pull on one orange and, and the whole ripple effect of that whole structure. That, that's sort of what happens with uh, our, the fascial networks in our body as well. Uh, so that, the reticulin is the third ingredient. The fourth ingredient is the crucial liquid stuff in between all those other ingredients. And this is called ground substance. If there's only one thing that you remember from today's show, it's that ground substance. Now, what are you going to remember? Type it in. I'm going to remember ground substance because this is where the uh, impact on what your clients feel and what they're complaining of uh, is critical. When fascia is traumatized, and that could be you know, a physical knock uh, or it could be via repetitive stress, um, the um, oh, great thanks, George. <laughs> Not glass glue, but GS. Nice uh, contribution. Ground substance. That's the key. Uh, the key goods we're going on. So. When fascia is traumatized, either through a direct knock, like on a footy game, uh, or repetitive stress, so someone you know training for running. Right now, um, we're starting to we have one of our local fun runs coming up uh, in September, uh, the City to Bay Fun Run, and all of the weekend warriors are starting to get into their training. Perfect for business because this is they're really going to get ready to start injuring themselves with road running. Uh, so that repetitive stress. Uh, and the repetitive forces often contribute to fascial stress and damage. Now, the water content of the ground substance, when the fascia gets uh, damaged or stressed, reduces by up to 40%. It's nearly half. Speaking of a reduction in hydration of fascia, now, it was Cantu and uh, Gordon Godin, Groden, um, they identified this reduction in the hydration and what they found was that it's that dehydration of the ground substance that instead of being liquid starts becoming uh, gel-like uh, and gluey. In other words, rather than being fluid and liquid and almost like sloppy in nature, it dries up and becomes more gelatinous, even glue-like. Uh, it was Ingba who uh, observed that this glue-like state causes a reduction in the critical space and increases the friction between the collagen fibres. In other words, things start getting a bit stuck and gluggy. Um, it was Jennings who uh, summarised it uh, beautifully and he said uh, that fascia is like a sponge. It holds water. And when put under duress, it kind of it squeezed out and dehydrates and becomes gel-like and sticky. It's thought that this sticky state is a protective mechanism to limit further damage to the fascia. Maybe it's a bit like um, uh, the swelling around an ankle sprain, uh, after the swelling around an ankle after an inversion sprain or an ankle sprain. You know, part of the mechanism is to you know, limit movement to enable healing there. So that's one of the theories. But it's that stickiness that interferes with the muscles, ligaments and tendons and prevents them from sliding and gliding against each other with minimal friction. If some of the muscles are stuck up and can't slide and glide fluidly, just like nature intended, this interferes with the muscle's optimum function abilities. Make sense? If that makes sense, just hit a thumbs up and it's like, I, I know you're uh, on, on track with me. If it doesn't make sense, please type in a question. I'd be happy to address those for you and for anyone else. Great. Cool. Thank you. All right. I've seen lots of thumbs up here. Great. So if any other questions come up, don't hesitate to um, um, type them in and uh, I'll be happy to address those for you. Okay. So... Um, now, there are some extensive research and studies. One of the great uh, pioneering leading practitioners is Tom Myers. 
Um, this is his textbook, uh, Anatomy Trains. Uh, this is a, a phenomenal text that um, just covers the details. Um, yeah, some of the, the foot stuff here and the shin stuff here. I'm going to go through some of the key details with you. Um, really, really useful resource if you're going to get into fascia and uh, musculoskeletal treatments uh, for particularly those lower limb conditions that we face. Uh, there's also the Italian family, the Steccos. Uh, they found uh, great, thanks Dean, uh, nice thumbs up there. I'm um, hoping that maybe you even have this book. Um, if not, I'm actually going to provide you with a, a link on how you can uh, check it out and get a, a copy if uh, that's something of interest to you. Um, it was the Steccos, Italian family, three generations, oh, two generations, generations of uh, uh, myofascial um, practitioners. They found that the changes in the structure, it, in literally the changes in the structure of the hyaluronic acid molecules is what changes the ground substance viscosity levels. And so they were able to explain the chemistry of what goes on that causes this glug glugginess and stickiness. Um, uh, Graston Research, those of you who um, may be familiar with tool assisted uh, massage and treatments, uh, Graston Research uh, it was probably the pioneering company that produced a lot of the um, stainless steel tools and trainings on uh, fascia release. Their research division uh, and Davidson found that using tool assisted massage, so you know, uh, take uh, uh, one of these uh, stainless steel tools and, and use it to treat some of the uh, fascial restrictions. Using this type of tool promoted uh, tissue remodeling, uh, included uh, extra fibroblast uh, recruitment, and the kicker, it restored the hydration levels of the ground substance. That's the crucial bit, restoring the hydration levels. Remember, Fascia gets damaged, becomes dehydrated by up to 40%. Restoring that hydration plays a crucial role in the rehabilitation, recovery and treatment uh, of those conditions. The net result ends up being that the fascial linings of muscles, ligaments and tendons can once again slide and glide against each other. In other words, instead of being like glue, they, that stickiness has been released and the function, normal optimum function has been restored. Make sense? I mean, it sounds like a good objective for treatment if we're uh, dealing with particularly those musculoskeletal structures in the lower limb. If that makes sense, give me a thumbs up here so that I know we're on track together. Okay, now, all sounding good and rosy, but I've got to let you in on, on a little bit of inside info, which you might already know about, and that is, there's this term that's uh, bandied about in uh, musculoskeletal professions called Fascial release. Now, some people criticise the, the term release because the true exact mechanism of action of fascial release or soft tissue mobilisation, it's not fully understood. But there's plenty of evidence that it works. And it's kind of like orthotic therapy. We know it works, but podiatrists and researchers still can't explain precisely what the exact mechanism of action is. So let's apply this understanding of anatomy and physiology of fascia and apply it to medial tibial stress syndrome. First, if we have a client coming to us uh, and you know, they're complaining of symptoms consistent with uh, medial tibial stress syndrome, you know, like there's localised tenderness along the medial border of the tibia, uh, it gets worse, you know, relative to the amount of physical workload uh, that they put the muscle through, you know, with extra sport, training or activity. Here's a question. How do we know when the fascia needs treating in order to help this client's problem? Well, that's where the diagnostic role of this tool comes into play. I'm going to demonstrate how you use these tools to detect specifically where fascial dehydration sites have formed, if they've formed at all. Because even though you get clinical signs and symptoms of the medial tibial area, it doesn't mean that there is fascial dehydration or restrictions there. It might be something else. So how can we assess that so that we can be confident when what we're doing with our treatment is actually treating the right thing? Would that be useful? Great. So 
For me to demonstrate that, just uh, type in your credit card details and uh, I'll process. No, no, I'm kidding. It's, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. You can send me your, your personal message of your credit card details if you like. If you think it's worth it, I always feel like a busker. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you how to detect those fascial restrictions. Then I'm going to show you how to treat those fascial restrictions. And then I'm going to show you the test that will tell you accurately whether the treatment was actually effective in restoring the hydration to the ground substance. Sound like some useful tips from Ted coming up? You betcha. Okay, so before I launch into the, uh, the demo of the TAM tool, TAM, Tool Assisted Massage or Tool Assisted Mobilization, Soft Tissue Mobilization, before I go into the demo, I want to give you some clinical reasoning on the treatment objectives of Tool Assisted Massage. Now, firstly, if there is the presence of tender points or trigger points, along the medial border of the tibia, the likelihood of, de of there being dehydration in the fascia, it's actually very high. Secondly, if there are fascial restrictions interfering with the functioning of the tip post muscle, it's highly unlikely that you'll achieve full recovery of a stressed tip post muscle or tendon. I mean, if you don't treat the thing that's causing the, the stress or the irritation, it's unlikely you're going to get full resolution. Does that make sense? Well, it does to me. So, first of all, what we're going to do uh, is, let me just show you some of uh, what these tools are. Uh, this one here, uh, it's a, a tool made by a company in the US, Myobar. Now, this is referred to as the three-in-one training tool. So it's a basic tool. Uh, what we've got to is we've got a nice rounded edge here. So we're gonna be uh, treating some of the bigger muscles. Not that I'm suggesting I've got uh, massive forearms here, but you know, the calves or the perineals or tibialis anterior, this would be a useful surface to use. And we've got a, a broad flat area here that can certainly work on uh, the bigger muscles, that calf muscle uh, region. Yeah. My anatomy not so hot, this ain't my calf. I, I know that, you don't have to tell me that. Uh, it's a very light uh, tool uh, and it, it, it's um, reasonably priced, at, it's about 100 US dollars. Uh, in fact, this is the exact tool uh, that we uh, give you in our tool assisted massage workshop. So if you are enrolled for that, um, this is the tool that you'll be getting as part of your registration. Uh, the Myobar company also produces these tools, which are called healing edge tools. Now, what you'll see here is they have a, a number of different contours to them. So again, a uh, rounded area with a sharper point, uh, which get, uh, enables us to get into some of the calf restrictions. Uh, if we were going to get more focused, like this area here, uh, typically tibialis anterior, I would use uh, that area there. This uh, shape right here is great for the Achilles tendon. So you can literally run the Achilles tendon uh, right through this area and get some direct effect on the fascial lining of the Achilles tendon. Uh, beautifully balanced, uh, they are very comfortable in the hand and work uh, brilliantly for um, some of the lower limb areas. Um, another type of tool is uh, made in the UK, uh, instrument, uh, I am, uh, instrument assisted massage. Uh, Malk, uh, his wife, uh, was, uh, is a um, uh, remedial therapist, was having trouble with her hands and uh, difficulties, designed this, uh, which is affectionately known as the dolphin. One of the great features here, uh, again, you've got some of the sweeping curves, uh, concentrated areas, uh, but the tail of the dolphin where you can get into some very specific uh, trigger points and, and put in a lot of focused attention uh, with minimal effort on the practitioner's part. You see, all of these tools, um, the key benefits uh, with them, the first one is they are force multipliers, meaning because they have concentrated points, you apply uh, a force, all that force then gets concentrated into the specific area of where you're applying it. 
it means you don't have to generate such uh, physical loads yourself. If you're a, um, a physio or a uh, remedial therapist, you know the toll that digging your thumbs uh, has into certain soft tissues, particularly when you're dealing with tough collagenous structures in the foot. So what this does as a force multiplier, it makes it easier on your body and more specific. So you're not uh, applying a force onto uh, the thumb and you know, having a spread area, contact area. Area, you're getting right into uh, the concentrated point with these edges uh, and if anyone heard that that was a good idea Mark heard it was <laughs> sorry a bit of dad joke there for you Mark yes I know I know I know you hear it every time I thought you'd heard it every time I uh, said that anyway so um, the TAM tool is a great force multiplier the other great benefit is that if you have limited experience or limited tactile sensitivity and most podiatrists uh, fall into this category because we don't get the uh, training in palpation and tactile skill development what the TAM does is it, it makes an excellent diagnoser of uh, fascial restrictions and irritations what I mean by that is you can literally run the tool along uh, a particular area of flesh and right now as I'm doing that the steel picks up any irregularities in uh, whatever structure whether it be along the periosteum whether it be the actual tendons any irregularities it picks it and amplifies it uh, and your finger on top then uh, feels uh, that irritation or so the amplification uh, and you uh, it's because it's amplified you feel it more obviously it's a little bit like uh, back in the day when uh, vinyl records um, were the key form of um, music recordings um, they're making a big comeback now but the stylus in the record groove would pick up the vibrations and then you, the, the sounds would uh, actually be transmitted uh, into um, you know, the amplifier and the speaker. So it's that kind of principle. So th that's one of the great advantages here. If you have poor skill, when I first started doing uh, the hands-on work, I've got to tell you my palpation skills were pretty useless. And a um, good friend and colleague put me onto this type of tool uh, treatment. And what I would do is I would practice and feel where the irritations were, and then I would run my fingers and see if I could feel or notice those. Um, quality difference in fascial or muscles or uh, trigger points to match up with it. And it, it kind of helped me um, work out if I was feeling the right thing or if I was on the right track. So if you've got any questions uh, about uh, the tools then certainly let me know. Um, oh I've got some other examples uh, for you as well. Now you might be looking at this and thinking well Ted that's a kitchen knife. It is. Uh, I mentioned about uh, Malk and uh, his uh, wife uh, um, struggling with her hands. This is what she did first of all. And Malk as an engineer decided, maybe I can make something that's a little more professional. Because i got a feeling if you walk into a treatment room and uh, you've got a knife or maybe you've got a spoon, uh, and <laughs> you uh, say, okay, let me do some treatment here. Um, it may not go down uh, quite so professionally, but uh, what you can do, literally it's possible, the same type of thing, you can run it over uh, those areas, it's not as specific and you won't be quite the same quality, but some uh, critters will say, hey, this is good, if the knife's out, that means uh, food mightn't be too far away. Um, that, that is one of the things that, <laughs> yeah, that's my glass of water. Uh, it's one of it literally you can use it so uh, that can be a cost saving option for you as well I hope that's a thumbs up on uh, the tool variation rather than uh, Penny Lee getting into my glass of water <laughs> okay so let's move over and uh, as promised uh, we're gonna do a demonstration for you I don't know if Penny you're gonna join in on this uh, but uh, I've got my good mate Scully lined up so uh, let's go see <laughs> Okay, sorry, it's a little bit of an in-house uh, activity going on there. So, let's uh, move over to uh, where the activity is going to take place. Uh, grab, okay. Uh, terrific. So, uh, yep, we've got uh, Scully here who's uh, joined us uh, for today, and I uh, suggested that Scully might uh, want to be the volunteer for our demonstration today, and heck, he flatly refused. Can you believe it? 
frankly, I don't think he's got the guts for it. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, it's good to have him around the joint. Uh, that uh, helps keep me company. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the basic tool. Uh, so with this uh, basic tool, uh, so you can see how simply but how effectively even the training tool that we use in our workshops, uh, how effective it can be with uh, using uh, for assessing and treating uh, tip post uh, tendonitis issues. Okay, so my volunteer is me, and as I promised, you get the view below the waist this time. Okay, so come on in, uh, camera operator. So if we uh, just film, uh, we, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on uh, Mr. Hairy Leg and the medial tibial area. Now, one of the first steps uh, that we're going to be doing, um, once we've got our practitioner, or we've got our uh, patient, our client positioned, and typically they'll just be resting here. Actually, my preferred position is to have uh, the client literally laying face down and the leg coming up uh, uh, and I do that for two reasons. Uh, the first is that it's, uh, for me as a practitioner, I'm at an ergonomic height and it's the, the leg and the tibia will be in mid um, chest position. That's the most efficient position for me to operate as a practitioner. The second great advantage is they've usually got their head shoved in a hole. And that means they're less likely to talk to you. For me, someone who loves to talk, uh, the advantage with that is that they can't see what you're doing, um, which is a good thing because then they're not going to ask you questions uh, and interrupt what you're doing. I want all of my awareness to be focused on my task at hand or at leg, uh, and then I will address questions once I've done my treatment assessment with them. So then uh, the first uh, thing that we're going to do in preparing the area is we are going to just apply some gentle, uh, a little small amount of salve. So this one's a bit of a uh, beeswax lanoline combination. Uh, and it's, it's really, it's a very thin amount. So it's kind of like uh, spreading on uh, Vegemite. So Aussies, you'll know that Vegemite you do very thinly uh, and you spread it over the area. What the salve does is take away the friction uh, because we want the, the tool to do the work and to give the feedback without getting caught on the skin. Now, um, what uh, we'll do is we're going to use uh, this end of the tool, this uh, rounded section here that will tuck into the tip post uh, muscle and behind the periosteum. My index finger is going to rest on top so that if the contact area hits any areas of dehydration and there are corrugations, literally the tool will bounce along. And you might even see it, sometimes that's uh, evident. Uh, in setting up uh, the, um, the, victim, uh, the, the patient or the client, what you need to do is just make sure that the muscle or the tissue that you're testing is not flexed and relaxed so there are wrinkles. So what I'm going to do is just ever so slightly dorsiflex my foot uh, and it'll just put the most gentle of tension in that area. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is establish a baseline. Now what I mean by that is I'm going to apply gentle force and I'm going to just run the tool along the whole belly of the muscle, the length of the tip post muscle, and as I'm running along, feel right there, it, it almost gets caught, it's a little hiccup, almost like a speed hump, oh, another one there, oh dear, the my oh dear, <laughs> the myotendinous junction right here, um, oh no, I'm feeling it, oh, and there's referred pain going into my foot, okay, I was hoping this wasn't going to be the case, but it is, so, Right within this area here, there's a, a spot right here, but here I can feel there are, it's, I'll run through and not talk, and, yeah. Okay, and it's just kind of catching and bumping just under this area here. Just see if we can, if you can uh, see that a little more closely if we zoom in, and uh, let's see if there's, maybe not. Okay, great. So, the way the treatment works, I've isolated the area. Now what I'm going to do is get a little more enthusiastic. And what I mean by that is we're going to up the load, and typically we're going to go to tolerance level. So keep uh, in communication with your clients and let uh, and check the you know, tolerance on a pain scale, 0 to 10. 10 is maximum, 0 is no uh, pain or discomfort. 
up to about six and a half or seven is uh, generally what's um, the, the aiming, the point that you're going to get to. So I'm going to just run to this. The first stage is uh, passive um, soft tissue massage. And it's at about the speed of one second will cover about 10 centimeters. So you'll see here me working there as I work uh, more deeply, I can feel that there is uh, some nice bumps and hiccups here and oh, this is going to be so special. Uh, good. So you might see how uh, now my finger is jumping up and down a little bit as I get into this deep area. So we continue that for 30 seconds. So this is the passive um, treatment. Now we're going to start off as active. And the way that is, uh, is I'm going to have the foot plantar flexed and then I'm going to dorsiflex. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go from proximal to distal. So I'll start proximal and to distal. And this helps us separate some of the sheaths between the muscle groups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in the name of science and lecturing. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Okay. And you can see why having someone's face chuffed in a hole and holding them down there can be a good thing. Because uh, I think I'm breaking out into a little bit of a sweat. Okay. And is that 30 seconds yet? Oh, please say hurry up. Great. Oh, okay. Now, if we zoom in, uh, hopefully I'm not sure of the lighting, you can see there's a nice focused area of rubor. So we've got some inflammatory response happening here. That's the actual treatment. So literally it's a, a 30 seconds and 30, 30 seconds passive, 30 seconds active. Now what I'm going to do is the baseline testing again that I did at the beginning. And uh, so everything in a resting position, again, that same uh, light pressure pass. Okay. Oh, well, that almost feels nice. All right. So this proximal area here in the muscle, that is completely smooth. That, I like that. Here, in my attendance junction, I can feel it's better, but not best, uh, but definitely smoother. It's certainly not jumping around as it was. You see, what the inflammation does now is it literally helps uh, start to... Uh, there's the pressure in there, and now we get rubor. Uh, this is part of the fluid that's going to help with the rehydration. Microscopically, some of those collagen cross linkages are being uh, opened up uh, and allows the fluid to actually get into the fascial linings as well. Okay, that in essence is how a, a treatment session would be on the, the tip post muscle. Now, I would also explore what's going to be happening uh, lower down uh, and uh, just you know, right into tip post, right into its navicular insertion uh, to see if there are any other areas of focus um, and, and apply the same treatment uh, to that area. Great. Now, if you have any questions, um, certainly type them in. There are some key rookie mistakes that I picked up over you know, the 20 plus years of teaching this kind of work that other um, students and practitioners uh, have um, dem or highlighted and also me personally. So let me go back to the desk and um, run through those with you so that you can... <laughs> oh no, someone's claimed the seat. Obviously that's uh, warmed up there. Okay, now, so we have a special... Um, process that goes on when this takes place and uh, we'll just park Penny here and yes uh, we have a second <laughs> so right now you know uh, who runs this household and this uh, office facility cool all right so key rookie mistakes now um, first one is the contact points and what I was doing uh, as far as what I mean by contact points is where you apply the force. Now, when you're dealing with tip post, uh, because of its attachment right into the medial border of uh, the tibia, you've got to be really careful that you're not grinding into the periosteum. Why? Because it hurts. 
So again, remember the tolerance uh, factor. You gotta work against it. Uh, and sometimes you'll feel those corrugations right against the bone. So be alert and be aware. And that's where the, um, the sharper edge might almost be a bit counterintuitive uh, that you can be more specific along that bony edge. So that, that's the, the big advantage with uh, the, the contoured surface there. Um, yes, and if you have a specific trigger point, then uh, the tail of the dolphin tool uh, works in really well. The second uh, factor that uh, rookie mistake is pretty common is the speed. Sometimes what practitioners do is almost, um, there is a one technique, the gua sha, where you can go faster and, and broader. But when you're getting into those specific fascial linings and you are uh, diagnosing or assessing from a clinical perspective, the speed. So cover about 10 centimeters over a second. That's an, an important distinction there. The force. Now, you've got to get to get that uh, feedback into your fingers particularly for the baseline pre and post treatment. You, this is the art of being a practitioner and uh, working with um, manual therapies, is you do, need to do your best to go around the same force. So you're comparing apples with apples. Uh, that is a, a key distinction to be mindful of. Because uh, sometimes when you press harder and deeper, you will feel more of the, the deeper areas there. And that's the, certainly, there are uh, layers and elements uh, of the treatment uh, that we certainly go through in our workshop, but uh, that's the reason why that's listed as a rookie mistake. Uh, and the um, working with intolerance. Yes, you want to produce that rubor, uh, but you also want to be able to um, converse the thing is, if people can't talk while you're doing it, what, one, we want them not to talk, but if they're in so much pain that they can't talk, that's too much. You'll cause more damage, and then, and typically that damage is to the muscle um, cells, the muscle fibers, rather than working on the fascia. So you got to, it's a, again, it's the art and the fine line of getting that right. If you've got any questions, please type them in, and uh, I'll make sure I answer them for you. Uh, okay, oh yes, I see. How long slash how often do you do this treatment for? Okay, great question. Um, remember, this tool assisted release is a key component of the three phases of soft tissue rehab. Remember how we covered that uh, previously? Stretch, strengthen, stabilize. This is the part of the stretch routine. Typically what we'll do is, uh, when we're dealing with um, the, the fascia in the lower limb, we need to work over a period of three weeks to get the optimum result, and typically we will see people twice weekly. Uh, the, depending on how many um, sites that you're working on, uh, what will happen is each specific site, you'll work for that um, two lots of 30 seconds, 30 seconds passive, 30 seconds active, that's all for that site. Then you may move to another site and repeat uh, that routine. So that's how long you do the treatment for. See them twice weekly for three weeks and then reevaluate. The typical rate of improvement is, uh, it, it's kind of like you get most of the um, textual and quality uh, improvements within the first three visits and then it kind of tapers off and gradually improves for the next three. So it's that uh, um, uh, is the typical observation. and. Um, listening to your clients' symptomatic reports as well. They'll often follow that as well. Terrific. Um, Jackie, nice to have you on board. Thank you for joining us today on Triple T TV. Uh, okay, what if I don't have a TAM tool? All right, so, all right, uh, there's a, a great exercise that uh, sometimes what happens is uh, you don't, um, if you don't have a tool, uh, and you want to get some of that uh, fascial release, then you can teach your clients to do a self um, shin massage. Now, what I've got here is uh, a handout that we use uh, in our clinics. So this is the um, shin massage self treatments. It's got uh, yeah, the what, why, how, so what it is, uh, why you do this, and the actual instructions on the exercise as well. Uh, we're including that in uh, today's freebie, uh, so you can download that and, and use that. But that's a really useful exercise, particularly for those tip uh, post conditions. 
uh, for people to do uh, the, um, the digging in and releasing of those uh, trigger points and tender points uh, while they're waiting for their orthotic devices uh, to be manufactured. So if that's, you know, ideally if it's 10 days to two weeks, you can get some really good uh, impact uh, in that time. Uh, okay, so now, um, the other question, if you don't have a TAM, oh, seriously, if you don't have a TAM tool, get one. If not, <laughs> grab a spoon, uh, grab a knife, and, and get a hold of one. But heck, for 100 bucks or uh, US, um, then that's, it's, it's money well spent. Uh, and uh, Teresa, oh, great question. Now, would you use this together with FMT? Absolutely. Yes, uh, it, it's um, combined together, and that's part of uh, what we go through in our TAM workshop is how you piece that all together and include it in your overall treatment plan, but definitely um, great. And I'm thinking of some of the practitioners, uh, Brent, uh, Dan in Sydney, um, who will combine uh, FMT with uh, acupuncture and dry needling. There are certainly some great ways to combine uh, these treatment modalities. Great. Uh, and uh, during one of the sessions, yes, indeed. Um, certainly would include that. Normally we do the FMT mobilization and then finish off with the soft tissue work um, beyond that. Great question, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, I mentioned uh, Myobar, uh, so it's myobar.com. Again, uh, we've got uh, the links uh, for you here. The founder and director of Myobar, Dr. Matt Hazel. Um, now, he's in the US, he's offering free shipping of any of the tools uh, that they have on offer globally. Uh, so that's a, a special offer they've got happening this month. Uh, I'm also including a, a link uh, to an interview that I did uh, with Matt recently. Um, you can get the full lowdown on instrument assisted soft tissue massage from the man himself. So um, that's good. You, in uh, today's freebie, you'll get the link directly to that interview. Um, so this week's uh, freebie, it includes um, a cheat sheet on medial tibial stress syndrome, uh, covering the, the why and the how uh, of the key points we've covered today and how you actually go through that, as well as uh, Ted's tips uh, checklist of uh, rookie mistakes to avoid. We also include um, the uh, so useful links, uh, and these are links on... Um, so with uh, Matt and the Mayo Bar, uh, we've also got uh, the Steco book on fascial manipulation. Uh, we've also got uh, Anatomy Trains. So this uh, book that uh, I referred to here, uh, Tom Myers' uh, great text. Uh, also the um, TAM demo on the tip post. Um, you get the direct link uh, to an educational video there. Uh, and if you uh, want to discover more about uh, TAM in our workshop, then there's a link right here. Uh, it's all the plugs there. Then uh, the other thing is the um, actual shin self-massage uh, exercise here. Uh, so handouts here, diagram, we found that really useful to uh, give to our clients as well. Um, all right, if you've just joined us, where you been all the time? You missed out on Penny, who's now really curled up and gone to sleep. Um, I'm Ted Jednick, but we can still be friends. Uh, today we've been exploring the therapeutic value of tool-assisted massage when treating medial tibial stress syndrome cases. Uh, we clarified the term fascial release. Uh, I did a demo of uh, TAM and uh, the medial tibial stress syndrome, including the pre and post treatment testing so you can be confident you've made a difference. Uh, I ran through the key rookie mistakes uh, that I've learned from teaching manual therapies for over 20 years. Uh, and then I listed the fabulous freebies that we're giving away as part of today's Triple T TV show. Whew. We packed in a lot in today's show, haven't we? Please let me know what uh, you found most useful. If you found it worthwhile, uh, please uh, um, put in a thumbs up there. Appreciate that. Uh, I promised you that you would get at least six action steps uh, to take away, and I reckon we've done that. Um, so you've got one more action to take now, and that is grab your freebie of Ted's tips on MTSS from the link that's right below if you're watching live, or above my head uh, if you're watching a replay. Um, as an added bonus, there's, uh, the freebie also includes videos on some of the TAM techniques for tip post and Achilles tendonitis, so um, that's yeah, great stuff there for you to view and check out. 
Uh, before we sign off, if you have a question or a frustration with MTSS that I haven't covered, um, please put it in the comment box below. Or maybe you've got a suggestion you'd like to uh, contribute. Um, if this is a replay you're watching, uh, then look, we check and keep an eye on all the comments and questions there. So oh, please feel free to add yours in. Next week's show is... We're going to dive into Achilles tendonitis cases. I've received so many requests about this condition because this can be a real brute to resolve. Uh, for this condition, uh, you need to be clear on the assessment and the rehab path of Achilles and calf muscles. So that's all coming up in next week's show. You won't want to miss it. So join me next week to fast track your clinical outcomes for Achilles conditions by discovering tried and tested strategies that work not just in my clinic, but in clinics all around the world. We'd love to have you join us and chew the fat. Thanks very much for joining me today. Um, if you appreciate uh, what we've covered and it's been of value to you, please join me in saying a great big thank you to Dr. Lil, who is a key player in making sure that we provide stuff that's relevant and useful for you. So you can click the heart button to send that across the screen. That'll be great. I'll send my... Heartbeats uh, from here, uh, and until next time, if you haven't already uh, liked our Facebook page, Foot Mobilization Techniques, please do so. If you've got a colleague who you think they would get some benefit for their MTSS uh, cases, then please share this post with them. And as my mate uh, in Queensland says, this is Matt. Matt, you know who I'm talking about. If you want to stay ahead, catch up with Ted. And we can play Rima Rima around the rose bush. No, sorry, that didn't work either. Okay, look forward to showing you my tips next week. It's been a blast catching up with you today. I hope you've had a cracking good time. Until next week, same bat time, same bat channel. Next Tuesday, take your skills to the next level and tool up and fix more feet like never before. Cheers.